Hey Forum, my name is Manny, aka Cascade Sense. Welcome to another video. As you see by the title, this one is on my top 10 fall fragrances niche edition. But it goes without saying, unfortunately, we're not going to get a normal fall this year with COVID-19 still happening. Who knows, maybe things clear up before then, but I'm just going to take it a little bit more easier this fall, this time around. So some of my more outgoing occasions, I'm not really going to prioritize just because who knows if they'll even be as fun. If not, maybe not happen at all. So unfortunately, Unfortunately, some of my more night owl favorites have gone by the wayside here, if not some of my more formal favorites. So yeah, you'll see some of my more cozier, more casual offerings being prioritized here. But with that being said, and without further ado, we might as well get on with the list, shall we? Starting off with the number 10 niche fragrance offering here. This time it is this right here by Raja Parfum. It's Midsummer Dream. Really cool story right here with the Midsummer Dream. Of course, it was made in commemoration of William Shakespeare, specifically his 400th year legacy. And the thus using specifically a Midsummer Night's Dream as inspiration for the scent. So here you have a more enchanting kind of scent, one that kind of reminds me of an enchanted forest, if I could put that into a fragrance. So you have a blast of citrus at first, but you quickly get rushed into some more mystical notes, if you will. You got some rose de mai, as well as various spices and resins, most specifically elemi, giving it this deep green foresty feel. But ultimately, what you're getting at the end, which gives it a more intoxicating factor, is benzoin. Benzoin is typically thought of as a dirtier vanilla or something that can substitute vanilla in a more, I guess, rugged way. And while that is that here, it's actually rather pretty. A scent that you definitely think about where when you get a whiff of this, you're just thinking about where could I be getting this whiff from? Like where could this fragrance be from specifically is what I'm saying. Again, my mind, it's a mystical enchanted forest type scent. I think that's really cool. The inspiration's really cool. But since it leans on a more formal side in my personal opinion and I just don't think I'll have that many occasions for it as a result this coming COVID-19 fall and that's why it's so low on this list but nonetheless I still think it's really awesome so check it out if you have yet to it's a Midsummer Dream by Raja Puffa. Moving on to the next fall niche fragrance and this one is a formal favorite of mine like ever and usually the top two or top three fragrance right here on this list but again with the ongoing circumstances it's just not. It's Iris Fove by Atelier des Or. Now with that being said this still might be my favorite fragrance on this list period right now. It just feels so exalted with its approach to Iris that I just feel like I really just want to save this for when I think it's most appropriate. Like sure Iris can be dressed up or down and maybe you feel like you can take a fragrance and dress it down yourself but no I really do feel like this can only be dressed up especially with the supporting notes that it has here. So we're talking patchouli but most notably myrrh to give it this old worldly feel. One that again feels like it's evocative of some sort of nice smoky status very balsamic sweet aromatic kind of spicy but again i can't emphasize enough how like exalted it feels like we're talking baby jesus and three wise men level i feel like this is the kind of stuff you'd gift him to me those old testament notes are that pretty that regal with again a little bit of a powdery touch from the iris so definitely check this out if you've yet to if you're into iris or an alternative take on it and or have the occasions for it this season around again it is iris fove by a Atelier des Or. Moving on to my number eight niche fall fragrance this year. Here we go. It's by Nishani. This one's Ani. Now what I most like about Ani is that it kind of follows a traditional fragrance formula despite being one that's more geared towards full weather. I just feel like the spices here are done in such a beautiful way. Getting a lot of what feels like ginger and or cardamom. It's like an enveloping spicy sweetness. Couple that with a darker style vanilla. One that feels ultimately sweet yet dry and not too gourmand. I feel like this is just like a just right kind of scent and I really appreciate that. Got a little bit of a sandalwood backbone too. I think it adds to the coziness overall. And yeah, I just feel like this is one of those go anywhere, do anything sense for the fall, like if you really wanted it to be. That being said, I still feel like it is most appropriate for a night out. And just because I don't foresee myself having too many of those this fall, that's why it's ranked a little lower on the list. But nonetheless, it's super wonderful. I love this brand in Nishane, and I still love this right here in Nani. So again, that's my number eight niche fall fragrance. All right, for moving on to the next fall fragrance, here we go at number seven. This one is by Lolabo. 
It's called Poivre Ventois. Now, Poivre Ventois is without a doubt the most expensive fall niche fragrance this year. If you know anything about this stuff, you would know that it is a Lavo City exclusive. So it is sold at an elevated price point if you're able to get it elsewhere outside of the city it's actually from, which is London, UK. And believe it or not, to uphold that exclusivity, you can actually get this only throughout one month of the year, and that is this month, September. Unless, of course, you live in London where you can get this year round. So if you are interested in any Lalabo City exclusive and you're not too far from a Lalabo or a Lalabo account, definitely go try them because, again, otherwise they are really hard to get a hold of. And unfortunately for your wallet, if you're like me and you fall in love with one, it's definitely going to hurt. That being said, it is definitely worth it for me. I absolutely love this take on black pepper. And for years, I was trying to find a black pepper scent for me that actually worked. But I think since it didn't go into a fresh, spicy direction and went into a more dark, spicy, sweet direction, that's why I fell in love with this. Like, I legit have no complaints at this fragrance. It's a black pepper, dark, dry vanilla bomb with a touch of labdanum that also gets compliments. It can cut through my Canadian cold. Yeah, I am in love with this stuff. But it's one that I feel like I want to reserve most for my most social of gatherings. It's not one I just want to wear around the house with myself or my closest of loved ones. Like I better be going somewhere nice with this and or just on a night out in the town. So yeah, you can understand why it's only ranked at number six this time, but again, I still love it. So there you go once more, it's Poivre Ventois by Lolabo. Now moving on to my number six, here we go. It is by Mask Milano, it is Russian Tea. Now what's cool about Russian Tea is that it's a tea fragrance that's an actual bomb. I've lamented on this channel before in the past that tea fragrances typically don't perform, but this right here definitely takes exception to that. That with some of the notes it is supported by. You might argue that the tea is a more of a supporting note rather than everything else because of how infused it is with birch and leather. So it's going to be smoky and amalic with this green backbone in the back, of course, being the tea. I do wish that the tea lasted throughout the scent more, although it just goes mad leathery on my skin kind of quick. But that's okay too, because I think that aspect of the scent is done rather beautifully as well. Can't complain with a leather for the fall. That being said, I think it's extra cool too that apparently tea in Russia also has like leather notes to it if you were to catch a waff of it as well. So I guess I have to give Mas Milano some points for accuracy too. I think that's pretty cool. And yeah, I guess this is one that I will take on a walk with me. You know, leather jacket throughout the city park. It's chill, subdued, yet it's kind of pronounced and still masculine. So yeah, definitely a big fan of this stuff as well. Again, it's my number six fall niche fragrance. It's Russian Tea by Mask Milano. Moving on to the next fall fragrance, crossing over to halfway point point. Here we go. It is by Zoologist Perfumes. This one is called Squid. Now Squid is my token niche fall fragrance here that's supposed to bridge the gap between summer and fall if that makes any sense. With its aquatic nuances to me that's representative of it still being kind of warm especially where I live here in southern Ontario Canada. And then with this stuff starts to sink deeper if you will. Some of the more inkier nuances reminiscent of an actual squid start to come out. It also feels kind of prehistoric and or ancient with a more old worldly kind of note like a Poppinax. Again, another slightly sweet balsamic spicy warm kind of resin. But yeah, this stuff is quickly becoming maybe at worst a top three favorite in the Zoologist Perfumes catalog. A lot of charming offerings throughout the catalog, so I think that's really high praise. And despite how artsy it is, despite how you might be apprehensive of how inky it is, I still feel like it's rather wearable, again with those aquatic nuances. So definitely check this out for the summer into the fall weather. Again, it is Squid by Zoologist Perfumes. All right, four, moving on to the next fall niche fragrance. Here we go. It's by Kajal. It's Kajal Om. Now, Kajal Om is Kajal's more do anything flagship kind of masculine scent. So, we're talking really upbeat opening notes like mandarin and grapefruit. Add in a sweet, spicy, woody kind of mid that's sure to give you a nice, cozy projection cloud consisting of cardamom and guyac wood. Along with a dry down characterized by musk, vanilla, and mainly tonka beans, it's just hard not to like this stuff. There's a part of it that feels like it also has this Middle Eastern influence, which I guess is really consistent with the brand. Maybe it's the touch of oud in the base as well, but it's nothing that I personally would be apprehensive of if you're apprehensive of that note in general. For the most part, you're getting something sweet and spicy that is just hard to hate. Again, I do anything scent, but for me, would lean more towards a night out just because of how friendly this stuff is. But since I think it's equally cozy, it's one that I'm okay with just wearing for the closest of loved ones that I have and or just by myself. Definitely great for Ray into the rest of the Kajal brand if you kind of want to look at this like an entry level, if you will. So definitely check this out if you've yet to. It's my number four niche fall fragrance. It is Kajal Om. 
All right, Flora, moving on to my number three fall niche fragrance. Here we go. It's by Zerzhoff. This one's called Golden Mocha. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a minute, you would also know that this stuff also made my summer niche fall fragrance list. But the reason why this stuff still makes my fall list is because I think it's kind of like what I would use squid for, but maybe easier to wear as far as a scent that could bridge the gap between summer and fall. You know, late in the summer right now, for example, and early fall days, you know, when it's still warm when you wake up, but it gets cool or sooner yeah that's this scent right here i'll spray it's a really casual take on coffee with a lot of citrus and since it isn't a full-blown coffee gourmand it's not going to last all day too which again i probably wouldn't want it to if i wanted to only last until maybe after work and then i can spray something else now some people might hate that lack of performance and the fact that it doesn't feel like a full-blown coffee gourmand but i actually like this alternative take on coffee because i feel like syrupy breakfast coffee gourmands are just there's too much of them and I also think it's hard to make unique without being compared to anything by Maurice Roussel. So to showcase coffee in different facets, I think is equally fun. Got a touch of amber here as well as like a slightly green backbone as well, which I think will help enhance like the citrus. At least off of me where the citrus has lasts a long time, I feel like it's partially because of this. And yeah, I just think it's overall a really unique take on coffee. So definitely check this out if you've yet to, if you're receptive to something like this. Once more, it's Zerjoff's Golden Mocha. All right, Flora, moving on to my number two niche fall fragrance this year here we go it is by Guerlain it's called Louis now what I like about Louis the most is it's more modern approach to a vintage kind of lounge dressed up kind of fragrance you have this heavy dose of carnation which is a spicy floral that was spammed heavily in fragrances of yesteryear you have this leatherish dry down as well but what I think modernizes everything is this fragrance's heavy use of benzoin again benzoin can come off as somewhat intoxicating as far as an alternative take on vanilla so you might be thinking why am I putting this up so high when it feels like a night out scent again when i wouldn't have that many nights out to go out with this come this covid19 infested fall but the thing is i keep reaching for this just chilling at home and editing or hanging out inside indoors with a loved one over a coffee like i just love this scent personally that's one that i would personally rock for myself very consistent with my channel's history recently because again i keep spamming this stuff definitely a big believer in louis here again i'm sucker for a touch of vintage and then of course this presentation right here i think it just looks extra sharp throwback art deco font and bottle done tastefully like this you just again can't go wrong with so again definitely check this scent out if you've yet to it's by Guerlain this one is called Louis my number two niche fall fragrance and last but not least here we go with the number one spot one that I'm really excited to present to you guys again and once again it is the fall king or queen by Italie Verdrange it is like this initially inspired by Tilda Swinton herself and advertised as Tilda Swinton like this the currently titled like this is to me the closest thing to fall in a bottle so here you have notes that are just evocative of warm colors like orange yellow brown i guess the note that sticks out in my mind the most is the pumpkin it's done in such a lush tasteful way if you ask me add along that immortelle which is more of like a caramelized herb so you're hit with this thought that you are in a field of some sort but you feel like there's like baked goods around as well that's what i get out of this stuff right here add in some supporting notes like heliotrope going to give it a more vanilla touch and yeah i just feel like this stuff and yeah once you put this stuff on it just feels like fall just a very subdued casual fall offering that i feel like anyone can easily like like if you're apprehensive about aromatics and you want it done in a more cozy way again with the sweets here i just feel like you might even love it especially when it's not too in your face and specifically with that note of pumpkin i still can't help but want to emphasize that i wish it was used more often in perfumery but i understand why it's not it is kind of a weird note but if you're able to make it work so harmoniously like I think this stuff does. That's why I think it's a really cool note. So if you're looking for the absolutely coziest, most evocative of fall scent on the list, look no further than my number one here. Again, it's like this by Eta Lieber Grange. All right, Forum, before we conclude this video, I, Manny from the Not So Distant Past and or Future, has something to say on behalf of our beloved sponsor for today, and that is Exter. Exter makes these really premium wallets that will definitely set you apart from the rest of the pack when it comes to coolness. And while there are other quick access RFID blocking wallets out there, I think this one with this kind of motion that you just push, it's the slickest I've ever personally used. Of course, you have a nice minimalist design here that I can't also get enough of. You just have all the essentials here. So nowadays you're not carrying that much cash and the world is largely going into a more digital direction. So 
why not go with something like this? But the real star of the show is this guy right here behind the wallet. This is your extra Chipolo tracker card, and I think this thing is quite awesome. You kind of just slide it in back there, and then you sync it to the Chipolo app on your iPhone and or Android. And from here, in case you misplace your wallet, you can actually find out where it is. So let me show you. So on the app, I can physically click on ring to find. And there you go. So wherever this is at, wherever you might have left it locally and or wherever, you'll always have access to it via the app, ensuring that you'll never lose the location of this wallet unless someone actually takes the tracker card out. But this thing works both ways too because I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm working at home, I always seem to misplace my actual phone. And now I can use this right here in the tracker card's buzzer to actually find my phone locally if it's just nearby. So also check this out now. I'm going to double click the tracker card. Come on, that's pretty cool, isn't it? I have to give a big shout out to them for sponsoring this video. So what I'm saying is if you guys want also support my sponsors because they're able to support this as far as furthermore financially. And just so you know that love is furthermore reciprocated from our end, you'll get a discount on any of these great extra wallets using my affiliate link in the description below. So it's specifically the Parliament wallet by Exer for the win. So there you go forum. We have niche fragrances of all sorts comprising this full niche fragrance list. I hope you enjoyed it and if you guys also want to let me know why I potentially missed please do so in the comments below maybe I'll perhaps take a look at them in the near future perhaps review them so if you do have some suggestions definitely tell me and yeah what can I say I really want this fall to happen again might as well rush into the cold just because it's not like we had a proper summer anyway and I guess I'm just kind of done with the heat like that oh well anyway if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up it really helps get this video seen if you really really enjoyed it please share it with your family and friends as well and if you also want to be one of the first people on future videos like this definitely subscribe if you've yet to too as well as also smashing that notification bell until the next one forum that about does for me thank you again for the ongoing support take care for now peace out bye wear your fragrances